On tonight's one hour special of Q Weekly, we take some positive steps at the 2003 Positive Women Public Forum. We then catch up with the boys, Was and Gav, and discuss the block and how it has changed their lives. Finally, we take a look at the 2003 Rambo Awards held last week and afterwards discuss with the public what they thought of the event. Up now is Q News. Good evening, welcome to this week's Q News, I'm Stephen. News.com.au reports that police are investigating claims that one of Australia's most senior Islamic clerics has incited his followers to attack homosexuals. A complaint made to Victoria Police alleges the chairman of the Board of Imams, Rekseb Idrisi, was reading from the Quran when he made derogatory comments about homosexuals and said they should have their heads chopped off. Imam Idrisi's alleged outburst occurred before 1,000 worshippers at a prayer service to celebrate the conclusion of fasting for Ramadan at the Albanian Mosque in Drummond Street, Carlton. Imam Idrisi, whose son was jailed last year for bashing gays, said yesterday the claims were unfounded and he had a video of the service in Albanian to prove it. But one worshipper who was at the service told the Sunday Herald Sun that Imam Idrisi had verbally attacked homosexuals. He said a complaint had been made to police and he urged, he urged others in the congregation to disavow the Imam's comments. Detective Sergeant Troy Burke confirmed police were investigating the complaint. New Labour leader Mark Latham has had his first small test on gay and lesbian issues, according to the Sydney Star Observer. Hours after defeating Kim Beasley for the Labour leadership on Tuesday, Latham's office received a phone call from New Mardi Gras asking whether the new leader would be happy to have a message of support in the 2004 Festival Guide to be released next week. New Mardi Gras co-chair Steph Sands told the Sydney Star Observer that Latham's office responded with a very prompt yes. It's a small thing perhaps, but in some ways reassuring, given that Latham has very rarely spoken about gay and lesbian issues in public before. A year before Senator Bill Heffernan made his infamous accusations against Justice Michael Kirby in March 2002, Latham warned the House of Representatives about Senator Heffernan's homophobia. 365gay.com reports that three studies are set to be launched early next year in India to test the ability of Viri to prevent HIV infection. The pill is already widely used to treat AIDS, but now it's giving a spark of hope that it can act as a shield against HIV virus, which causes AIDS. In 1995, studies on animals showed that taking the drug prior to HIV exposure prevented the virus from taking hold. The drug is also being used as a morning after treatment in cases of accidental HIV exposures by police and healthcare workers. Some doctors are prescribing it for 30 days as part of a cocktail of drugs aimed at killing the virus before it proliferates in the body. And in further news on HIV, a million dollar US government funded safe sex study was based on fabricated research and noted analytical publication claims. The, re the journal Research USA says three researchers have admitted making up interviews with teenagers for the study on AIDS prevention. The researchers were employed by the University of Maryland at Baltimore's Department of Pediatrics on a study on, on a study funded by a grant from the National Institute of Health. The study was designed to evaluate the impact of safe sex counselling on black youths in Baltimore housing developments and to determine if adding parental monitoring would have an effect on the children involved. And now before we rejoin Q Weekly, Melbourne's weather outlook. Tomorrow we'll see possible late thunderstorms with a top of 36 degrees. Uh, Wednesday change developing with some rain and a top of 29 degrees. The trend for Thursday, Friday and Saturday is mainly fine and mild to warm. I'm Stephen Lilly. Please join us next week for more Q News. Do you love to dance and grab any opportunity to do so? Then boogie on down in the name of peace and equality. 
The United We Dance 2 party is presented in association with the Australian GLBTI Multicultural Conference Committee and was inspired by the need for peace and unity in the wake of the September 11 and Bali attacks. Featuring door prizes, free champagne for the first hour and a great lineup of international music and dance entertainment, it all takes place Sunday, December 14th, 6.30pm till late at the market, 143 Commercial Road, South Yarra and all for only $6.00. Come along to United We Dance 2 and dance in unity. It's for all colours of the rainbow. Women make up half the 40 million of people living with HIV and AIDS. Young women are particularly vulnerable, but women of all ages are infected and affected by this disease as wives, mothers, daughters, grandmothers, granddaughters, sisters, aunts, nieces, friends, lovers, workmates, caregivers. This year, the global theme for World AIDS Day is Live and Let Live, to fight the stigma and discrimination which is still one of the greatest barriers to the diagnosis and care of positive people and to the prevention of new infections. To most in the Australian community, AIDS is an anonymous statistic. We positive women believe that the best way to fight the stigma and discrimination, to fight the fear, the ignorance, the injustice of HIV AIDS, is to give a face to HIV, to tell you our stories. Let me tell you my story, all right? Dash and Dan, or even bloody Dash and Dan, or sort of words to that effect. That's what I said. For years, I promised I'd take my kids to the show. Now I'd done it, and here I was, dog tired, surrounded by showbags, reading the mail. There was this letter at the bottom of the pile. It's funny the things you remember. It was the last letter I read. And when I read it, I let out a bellow. I said, dash and bloody damn! Or words to that effect. And my daughter and her friend came rushing in because they weren't used to hearing me use such strong language. I just sat there, grey looking. Eleven years before, I'd had a complete blood transfusion. And now they discovered the donor so long ago had been HIV positive. My story's different to that. The fact is I'd fallen in love head over heels doing cartwheels. And I married the man of my dreams. Jack seemed so charming and honest and straight, or so I thought. Until after the kids were born. Then he started staying out late. And one morning when I was doing the washing, I found in his shirt a card from a gay nightclub. Hey, what's going on? I tell you, Jack, my heart freezes when I look at this. What are you doing with a card from a nightclub, a gay one at that? What's that you say? You got this card from a bouncer at the club, did you? Oh. What, you went there because he owed you some money? Oh, well then, I suppose that's all right. Silly me, no worries. My sister later told the story. If I've got what they say I've got, then I've got to throw myself off the Westgate Bridge. The words came down to me down the phone line like a sledgehammer. This had to be serious. My sister was the strongest person I've ever known. And she was married to someone she loved. Thought he was her prince charming on white wire wheels. Why now should she be talking like this? I tried to stay calm, saying the usual, come on, it can't be that bad. Just tell me what it is and you'll feel better. She wouldn't tell me, saying only that she would wait until the second test results came in. I hung up the phone and reached for the medical book, began searching for the symptoms that I knew she had. I didn't have to get very far. A is for AIDS. My story's different, right? I was single, unmarried and driven by a wow corporate type business point of view i mean on a perfectly normal day this was me 
I connect with potential customers for my business. Afternoons, I'd argue with customs officials, do products, seminars for new clients, and the evenings, wow, the evenings. One cocktail party, two cocktail parties, three cocktail parties. Thinking all the time, you know, I better save up for that brand new Porsche and that wonderful house in Toorak. And then, on the last perfectly normal day of my life, the person I was going out with rang me and he said, uh, <clears throat> this is really so difficult for me, I mean, uh, I don't quite know how to tell you, but um, I've got gonorrhea. Oh, that's great. Thank you very much. I thought I'd better go lickety-split and be tested for gonorrhea. And while you're at it, test me for everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Test me for everything. That's how I found out I was HIV positive. And I think he knew all along. Yeah, I know he knew, and he lied. Gonorrhea, you've got to be kidding. <laughs> Lightning strikes, the lines are down Grand slide, great divide Sometimes when you think you've drawn the short straw Less is more, there are things we can't control But I'm climbing out of this hole Pull your head out of the sand Come and take my hand and talk Hi, I'm Vic Perry and I'm at the O'Donnell Gardens in St Kilda. We're at Positive Women's Positive Steps, HIV, a public conversation. And I'm with four gorgeous women here. We've and got... And a playwright. And a playwright, Graham Pitts. How are you, Graham? Hi, how are you? Good, good. And we have Andrea... No, Janet Andrew. Janet Andrew Arthur. Ann Phelan, Deborah Byrne and Jacinta Stapleton. And you all probably know them on various programs on television. And... How was today? We've just sort of fin finished a public conversation. How was it? I think it went really, really well. And what I noticed as a reader, so what we were doing were reading, the four of us were reading stories which Graham compiled from six women that he interviewed, has been talking to over the last few months. So we were storytellers today. And every time I looked out, people were just really listening. and. That, and for an outdoor event with all this noise, we've got Luna Park in the background, we had the wind cutting in and out on the mics, but I didn't once see anyone look like they were getting fidgety and I think that was terrific. Yeah. And uh, Deborah, uh, personally for you, how did it feel like reading out someone's story of living with HIV? Uh, well, it felt very positive. I've I'm a woman and I have three women that will uh, one day be, well and they already are out there in a slightly dangerous world I think. I've got a three and a half year old daughter so d days like this make me feel like I'm do what I can to make my daughters and, and other women's lives a safer place to be and it makes me feel strong. It does. Oh, Jacinta, now how was it for you? Um, it, was a, it was a really eye-opening experience I think. Um, I met the, one of the women whose story I portrayed 
and you know I just said to her I said you're so brave you know to be able to to share your story and uh, and to make people aware and you know it's true like even if you just touch one person and make them more aware of what's going on because it's an issue that's still prevalent in our society and and you know I think it gets um, forgotten you know with a lot of other things going on in the world so I think it's good just to raise awareness and and yeah so I feel good about it. Thanks Tina. And how about you? How do you feel to reading out someone's story, living with HIV? Do you know anyone yourself with HIV? Uh, I personally don't, but I have, with, from my involvement with Positive Women, had the opportunity to, to meet a few now, and some stunning people I have met, fortunately. Um, AIDS is not a sexy problem anymore, and I feel very strongly that we need to... Uh, for sexy women to support um, well, five women <laughs> <laughs> to support uh, positive women because uh, the profile is just not high enough and it's gone on the back burner and we need to get it right up the front again. Can I true, speak? true. Just a quick word, if there's anyone out there watching, the piece we did today runs about 25 minutes. It can be read by any four actresses. And if you are got connections at a school, a high school, if amateur theatre companies, whatever, contact Positive Women, get hold of the script and get the stories out there because that's what it was written for. Right, Graham? Very true. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, the more people see it, the better. I mean, what I saw today was one of four of the most beautiful performances I've ever seen but as long as that story those stories are out there the happier we are that's good thank you very much thanks a lot thank you. Thank you. I'm Vic Perry and we've just experienced a public conversation with Positive Women 2003 see you next time There's only one place in Melbourne you get a view like this. It's from the fabulous Pran Central Apartments on the corner of Chapel Streets and Commercial Road right here in Pran. We visited here recently to talk to two of our latest reality TV stars. And yes, we are here at the fabulous Pran Central Apartments, just gorgeous. And um, we're here, in case you hadn't guessed, to talk to Woz and Gav from the block. Oh, Hi, yeah. boys. Good morning. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Not too bad. What are you doing down here in Melbourne? Oh, the weather brought us down for once. How's oh. that? <laughs> it's our first day in Melbourne, actually. Look at this. It's I mean, it's incredible. a perfect Sydney day in Melbourne. No. <laughs> it's our first hot day of the season, actually, yeah. so you brought it with you. Well, believe me, it's cold back in Sydney, so we're appreciative of this. Oh, wonderful. So, no, we're down here today so just um, with Pran Central, mm -hmm. and it's great for us to come down and be part of that, promoting the shopping centre and just having a bit of a laugh. And, and they're auctioning us off, aren't they? Yeah, they're we've been auctioned off. off. At one stage. Oh, we're the prize. We're the prize. We're, we're, the, we're prize. the grand prize. Well, what a prize. I was going to say, Two um, for the price of one. <laughs> well, you know you hit, you've hit the big time when your undies are being auctioned. <laughs> now, <laughs> they're clean undies as well. We haven't worn them, thank goodness. <laughs> but if you pay a little bit extra, we can mark them if you want. No, I think you have to be paid. Well, okay. Here, <laughs> so have your feet have your feet touched the ground yet, or is it just is the frenetic pace still frenetic? It's been pretty crazy, hasn't it? The the, the whole the whole ride. I think um, you know, for the ten weeks of the block, we never thought that it'd ever be like that in our wildest dreams. In fact, when we were being filmed, we never told any of our friends that we were involved in this television show because we thought, imagine if it's a flop. It starts <laughs> on a Sunday it night rate. and then it rates, you know, and then it goes to a bloody Monday Monday morning show or something <laughs> like that. But uh, you've never yeah. shown your face to the Imperial. That's right, that's, <laughs> that's right. It. So, you know, we were caught up with it all and we had the most incredible journey with it all. But um, it's I still continuing. It hasn't slowed down. No. Like, Warren and I have both given up our jobs uh -huh. and uh, we're focusing on our business designer boys. You and that came about because of the show or would that have happened anyway? It, about a year ago, we wanted to do this. This has just been able to give us a launching pad that not many people can have. And we've had, you know, like so many people, you know, the contacts and, you know, the PR we've had has been incredible. And we feel really humbled by it all, yeah. don't we, Was? 
I mean, um, but let me say this: nothing's changed. And again, for people who don't know us, I say, "Oh, yeah, you're on telly, blah blah blah." Nothing has changed in our life except two things: how we're going to earn our money, mm. okay, and how strangers perceive us. Other than that, where we go, what we do, our relationship, our we're friends, just grounded, our family, nothing's and so on. changed. In Everything fact, the, same. the best thing is our friends have said we're back to normal, we're calmer. Because actually, whilst filming, we were loopy. You just go loopy. <laughs> you can't go 20, 22 hours a day for 10 weeks in a pressure cooker mm. and not come out a bit. Ooh. <laughs> so that's really how it was, yeah? 24-7 yeah. oh, pressure cooker? Absolutely. Like, when we first... Remember the first night we walked in and Warren <laughs> said to the camera crew... <laughs> I don't want to go back. Oh, no, you said, you said, can we have just 15 minutes by ourselves? Two minutes. Or two minutes. Two. And they said, hello, boys, this is television. <laughs> and seriously, that. over the 10 weeks, we got used to the cameras being there. Within because seriously, one. everything we did, we'd have a producer, a cameraman, and a sound recordist there doing every move, but then they just become part of our yeah. family, didn't but they? What the audience didn't realise was the house was set up like Big Brother, uh, but they didn't want to go down that path and show the audience that they were trying to copy Big Brother. So even when the camera crews left really early in the morning, mm. way, way into the night, um, we had cameras throughout the house and they had the most sensitive microphones. We were mic'd up, there were mics everywhere, so no matter what you did, you were being filmed. There was no escape. <laughs> now, come on, boys, we want dirt, we want goss, oh. you know. Favourite housemates, you know, oh, favourite housemates would definitely be Amity and Phil, oh, yeah. and um, yeah. and Fiona. And Fiona, mm -hmm. they're they're all live wires. I mean, having that bath with um, getting intimate with Amity in the bath, the three of us. <laughs> you know, we felt we felt everything, and she felt everything of us. Believe us, there she wasn't knows much what we got. Little bath, is there? <laughs> no. I suppose um, the people that we didn't click with were um, obviously Paul. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't think any of us missed that, even no. if we were. <laughs> he was, I mean, irrespective whether it was reality television or real life, mm -hmm. he treated us very, very badly on the whole, you know, from day one, yeah. and it just progressively got worse, didn't mm -hmm. it? And um, his wife is lovely, though. She is lovely. And, uh, and you know, Poor woman, what happened, you know? <laughs> How did she I just know? think it's what um, competition does. It brought out a side of people that you don't know until you put in that um, environment. But the other person we had no relationship with was Adam. He was neutral. He was so driven to do the renovation that um, he didn't even have time for Fiona, yet alone any of us. But Adam and Nat, in real life, they're lovely people. Yeah, they're lovely people. And look, yeah. I think Paul's changed a little bit yeah, well in the last week or so. After that competitive elements removed. Well, it's gone, and we're no yeah. longer, you know, a threat and so on, and he treats us actually quite, you know, quite well, but, yeah. you know. Um, did it bring that competitive side out in you guys oh, to any <laughs> silly question perhaps? But you don't really. Hey, Gavin and I have been very lucky. We were talking about this. We've, in life, any job we've gone for, we've got. Anything we've wanted, we've worked hard, but we've got. Yeah. So um, I think we're a little bit competitive. <laughs> and, I think, and I think during all the... Because we had to go for psychological tests and everything like this for the block. And I think they realised that the four couples were... Extremely. Highly, yeah, extremely competitive mm. and that was going to make good television and good drama and we we're all very sort of opinionated and quite vocal in, you know with any decisions that we we're making yeah. even just us as well we're quite opinion, yeah. we're quite opinionated and quite competitive and so on and you know but, but it worked it worked it got good television we can honestly say that the whole show betrayed us and portrayed each couple how we really are. So, I mean, but was that only, But there's only one bit that wasn't true. And it was probably at the end, wasn't it, was, yeah. where they made us to be a little bit bitchy and a little bit sort drama of drama queen-ish queen with, um, with the water running yeah. through our ceilings. Because they showed someone. one cup they of water. They showed a little cup of water coming through. Mm. They didn't show the 250 litres of water pouring through our ceiling in less than 60 seconds from Paul upstairs. Yeah, yeah we thought so. that was a tad unlikely. Yeah. Yeah. So. And, yeah. and also we did say goodbye to everyone. I had a oh, work that's right. we did too. Yeah. I had to be on a cruise ship at 8am. Oh. But they conveniently left the goodbye from the night before out. Other than that, and um, being put in our undies once or twice more than we actually anticipated, you got to see the real oh, no, you know something? We, we've learned a lot about, we, we went in there quite naive about television producers and so on. And, um, quite naive. I like a bloody naive. Very naive. But the funny thing was when they said, look, boys, you know, we wanted to wear our chef hats because we just finished our kitchen and so on and we wear our aprons. And I said, Warren, why don't we go as the naked chefs but we'd stick in our undies. Mm. Then the producer said, look, no, go out there with nothing on, just with your aprons. We won't use it. We just want to get the reaction from the other couples. And we but guess whose butts were on television for a week? All the promos. Promos. <laughs> Wasn't Gavin's butts. At least we got okay butts. I mean, but still, really. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Was that an element you were concerned about beforehand, portrayal? And you basically do sign your life away, don't you, when you go? Ab absolutely. And we had um, quite good conversations with Channel 9 because, um, I mean, Warren and I want to be portrayed the, the right way in terms of being gay and so on. And, um, and they gave us their commitment that, 
they wanted to work with the gay issue and work with us to get it right because and they didn't, they didn't, put back they didn't want to put back 20 years because their portrayal to mainstream Australia, you know, 6.30 time slot and so on, it could have a huge impact on how gay people across Australia mm. are perceived. And, and can I just say one thing? Channel 9 have lived up to every single promise right down to the last dot in the ice, crossing the T's, everything they've promised us. Well, they've been really good. Good on you, Channel 9. Good to see. I mean, <laughs> do you think these um, reality shows are a good vehicle for mainstream acceptance of gays? Well... That's, that, that's really quite hard. I mean, look, you've got a large population of gay people. The demographic's made up of so many individuals. It's very hard. There's only been a couple of gay people being put on television, so it's actually... I don't know. I mean, okay. Warren and I just went on the show as, as was and Gav. You know, we didn't want to try and be political. You know, we just had a good... We've got a good relationship and, you know, and we really just want to get on the job of renovating. Sure. It's only until after the show we thought it was more about human drama. <laughs> but I think, you know, from a gay perspective, not everyone's going to be happy the way that we, we were, were perceived and the way that we were. And, um, but, you know, we tried our best. We tried to be ourselves. Sure. And, um, and that's the main but thing. But I think one thing, and this isn't singing our own praises, because Gav and I are not political in any way, shape or form. We were just us. We were never set out to be gay icons or relationship models. What we do and what works for us works for us, be it gay or straight. But what's really lovely is the feedback from Australia, and I suppose by Channel 9 taking us further, we have tapped or bumped the barriers for minority groups. It's not just the gay community, it's any minority group. So Australia's opened the door, welcomed us into the living room and really embraced us. And the first 48 hours, yep, we hit a bump straight away. After that, it went from the first gay couple in you know television to Warren and Gav, aren't they great guys, fun guys. And that's where we're at. And that's why Channel 9's gone further with us and the whole journey's continuing. That's great, because I was going to ask you about the notion of being labelled gay icons yeah. and whether that sits with you. That's not the what you went no. in with the intention of, but oh, no. you've got to admit I that... Suppose it's, I suppose it's happened, you know, and um, in some ways. and We can't comprehend that. We, we, we can't really comprehend can't. it, but, you know, at the same time, if, if we've helped... I mean, we went to a nightclub, a gay nightclub, um, the other night, and a lot of people came up and said, look, our parents really struggle with us being gay. And they read that article in Women's Day with, it, with our mums and, you know, it wasn't I. And um, it really helped their parents actually understand that, you know, my mum never took it very well when I first came out. She thought, oh, you're going to be lonely, you know, you're going to be you know, all this sort of stuff. I thought that scene with your mother coming in to see the courtyard, that was just so sweet. Yeah. It was just lovely. It was really special. Yeah. It makes me go all tingly just thinking of it because that was probably one of the highlights of my life, I suppose, with, with mum actually genuinely accepting... Who it's I turning am. point. And with, and with Warren as well, because, you know, in the first few years when we met, you know, we weren't invited down to their place, and Warren actually helped turn that around. And the, the progress that my parents have made to accept it and to come onto national television to say, hey, we're cool with Gav and we're cool with his partner and, and, and so on, it's <laughs> pretty amazing. Yeah, Absolutely turnaround. amazing. Big turnaround. So it isn't necessarily the gay community. I mean, they've supported us, but it's really mainstream people. You know, yeah. Yeah, like we walk down through King's Cross, because that's where we live in Sydney, just down the road. And like, um, particularly this week with the, the rugby being in town and so on, there's like big mobs of straight guys. Yes, and normally yeah. we think, oh my God, should we walk, walk on the other the side line. of the road? But they see us we and they want to hug us, they want to yeah. grab us. They, you know, they just go the boys, go the boys. Go the boys. So yeah. I don't weird. know what's happened, but it's, it's great. It's, it's a really positive statement. And that's where Gavin and I get really... I don't know, it's, it's just a great sense of being around that, to that, see it. That is amazing. You know, and we're not exaggerating, country. that does happen so often. Um, I was reading recently about the reaction, um, Sydney versus Melbourne, to the show, um, and um, the sort of greater acceptance ratings-wise and talkback-wise in Melbourne versus Sydney. Yeah, um, does that mean Mel maybe Melbourne is the gay capital after all? I just think we had a couple of very silly um, radio drops out for ratings. That's all it really was at the end in of Sydney, the day. Yeah. And honestly, two UEs laughing all the way with us still. I mean, really, we went in there and they embraced us and said, oh, don't, don't take what Steve Price said, literally, blah, 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 and John Laws. But we did get back with John Laws. I think this will end it perfectly. Um, we only had one thing out of all the media as a thank you, and we had a dinner given to us um, for doing a certain thing. We went down to a restaurant. a restaurant that John Laws, we know, has an investment in down at uh, the wharf. But we didn't care. We just wanted to go there. It was local. He wasn't going to be there. We sat down. We had our first course. Gab went to the loo. We came back and said... As he said, look who's next to us, I went, ah, oh, shit, John and Lord this far was away. just there. And he was one of the radio jocks who really had a go. So I said, I'm not going to let this go. So I just went up to him. He was with the table of about six people and said, excuse me, John, there's no time ever 
a good time to interrupt a table and his wife's mouth just All their mouths dropped. dropped. I don't think anyone's ever gone up there. And he was below me and I had my hand on his shoulder and I said, I just want you to know that, what did I say? Um, I can't remember, but basically, we're the silly puss from television. Right, we're the silly puss from television. <laughs> and I just want you to know that we're real people and it was a pleasure meeting you and walked off. There was no animosity, there was no... Um, Malice in my voice. I just wanted him to know that yes, None it was so raging. Believe it. No, oh God, you should have been in the restaurant after that. I mean, it was that good, is, wasn't it? But it was good that he knew that we were re real people. Whether he believed that or not, his restaurant that he owns is full of gay people working there. Yeah. You know, so ratings or not. But with you know, Steve Price yesterday, we were at this um, charity auction and we were auctioned off to go and do a consultation at someone's place in to Sydney. The Cancer Institute. And guess who bought us? The executive producer of. Steve Price's uh, radio, so yes. we're the irony. <laughs> the irony of it all. So we're going to give him a bit of a pink, yes. pink bedroom and uh, a few accessories as well, Many. don't you think? <laughs> a few bits of plastic in his room, I think. Pink plastic. I think you might need it. <laughs> well, boys, that's fantastic. You are legends and um, inspirations to a lot of people. But thanks so much for joining us. You, you have got work to do downstairs, and we're going to see um, Gav's undies go for hopefully a lot of money. <laughs> so as well. Thanks a lot. Thank you. I'm sorry, but these are not going cheap. Who wants yeah, to model it? Come on. What's this going to do? You going to jump into it? Oh, come on. That's all right. Look. Stretch. <laughs> you get some volunteers for this. Who would like to model them for us? Now, oh, come on. Okay, these are the beautiful side, box wide fronts. Best to put them into a lovely frame. Come with instructions, rub gently. That's it. They are well and truly clean. <laughs> okay, guys, what do you reckon we should start this auction at? 65 for Suzanne over there. Going once, going twice. Oh, 70. 70, fantastic. 75, fantastic. Woo! <laughs> Anyone got 80? Come on, folks, 80. Uh, okay, it's all to you for 75, guys. If you'd like to see what the boys can do for you, visit them at www.designerboys.com.au or call them on 02 to the 2003 Rainbow Awards. We're at the Lido Cabaret, where we're about to find out who wins awards from everything as important as outstanding achievement in our community to bitch of the year. So let's go have a look. So what makes you entertainer of the year, huh? I have no idea. Whoever nominated me obviously saw something in myself that I certainly don't see in myself, but yeah, who, know, who knows? It's strange seeing your face. Most people just know you as a really sexy voice on the radio. Well, it's weird. I think that's basically all I'm going to be tonight as well. I'm just going to be a voice, so um, that's that's quite interesting. So you're going to do your acceptance speech from the wings, you know, this is Damien Nichols? Hey, I don't even know whether I've won yet, so I can't, I don't know. But you know, we're being positive, you know, we're being positive. If, you know, if somebody actually says, you know, um, and the winner is Damien, I, I want to shout out, redraw, redraw, so I, you know, we'll wait and see. Oh, we'll be watching out for that one. Thank you. Seriously, best of luck, darling. Thank you Good very chance. much. We're here with one of our Bent TV favourites, Nan McGregor. And I've worn my especially high shoes tonight just for fun, <laughs> Nan. Ha, 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 ha. Usually I love Nan because she's the only one who's my height. Yeah, but, well, I'm shrinking. <laughs> you're shrinking. That's great for me, especially with these heels. Now, tonight you love awards nights like this. Well, you're always here. You're always a part yes, of the community. Thank you. Thank you, yes. Yeah, it's great fun to see the community honour the shining lights and stars amongst it. And, yeah. 
So I raise a glass to them. That's right. And did you vote this year, Nan? Uh, I did vote, yes. I sent my my uh, little paper vote in. Uh, yes. Yeah, I voted. Good. And so uh, you're not gonna you're not gonna let us in on who you voted for, are you? No, no. <laughs> yeah, that shall remain a secret. <laughs> no worries. I hope you have fun tonight, Nan. Oh, I hope we. Will. I know we will. So, entertainer of the year. Yes. Yes. And diva of the year. I I, I can't believe it. Oh my I, goodness! What are you gonna do if you win both? Um, You'll be an entertaining diva. I. You know what? I I would. I I'm just happy to be uh, nominated. I. I exactly. I'm flattered, especially with the people that I was nominated with. Well, so. so a Australia and Melbourne in particular has really embraced you and what you do. They've do you feel been like fantastic. They've taken you into yes. the house? Oh my God, they've been fantastic, and I couldn't have been I couldn't have been nominated without them, and and I couldn't be on stage without them. That's for sure. It's the that's audience true. that makes me. Well, so. fantastic. That's absolutely great that everyone's gotten behind you since you've yeah, been here. They've been beautiful. Some fantastic beautiful. luck for tonight. Thank you so Enjoy much. the show. Oh, Quick, John Floyd, get the food out of your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> that, it was those honey carrots that were a little low. Honey carrots were they nice? Were they? Uh, the food wasn't the highlight of the evening. Yeah, well, the media don't get food, so I'm glad. Um, I'm here with John Thwaites at the 2003 Rainbow Awards. Hey. Now, John, why would you come to an event like this? Is this just for a pink vote purposes? What do you actually care about these awards? Well, I was invited, and I do care about the awards. And I've been—I was at the first awards, mm -hmm. and I've been to a few others, and I've always had a pretty good night. So mm -hmm. when Bill invited me, I said yes, I'll come. Do you actually enjoy the entertainment? Do you enjoy getting out amongst the drag queens and the queers? Uh, I reckon the entertainment's fabulous. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, it's quite professional. It's really well done. People have put a lot of effort into it. And you know, I appreciate the, the, the creative effort. Here on Q Weekly, here with Acting Sergeant Melinda Edwards and winner of a 2003 Rainbow. Congratulations. Oh, I only wish it was me. I went to the boss. <laughs> Did you not get it? No, it was actually for the Chief. Chief Bugger. Com Chief Commissioner Christine Nixon. Uh, she uh, won the Woman of the Year and also the Community Achievement as well. Yes. Which is fantastic. You know, she's an inspirational leader and to be able to have her leadership recognised by the community like this is fantastic. Yes. And and Melinda, I know you've expanded the lesbian and gay support services by the Victorian Police. How does it all work now? You have rural support, is that right? Yeah, we have gay and lesbian liaison officers all throughout Victoria. Um, they cover every single area of Victoria. Some of them are full-time, others are doing it as an additional role to their general duties. But, um, yeah, they're, they're certainly covering the whole state of Victoria today, Kay? Yes, and I guess we need to say of Christine Nixon's award, it is very, very exciting. And Christine was, I think, the first commissioner to, to march at the Pride March. Is that right? Yes, yeah, she was the uh, first Australian Chief Commissioner to march in a Pride March. And uh, she was obviously also the first female Chief Commissioner uh, in Australia as well. And that, that obviously hit the mark with a lot of the punters out there. Look, I think it is. And, and as I say, she's been an absolutely inspirational leader and it's shown through today. Is she a good boss to work with? She is a good boss. Yes. I need a raise. Ha, <laughs> <laughs>
I tell you, it's all happening here at the 2003 Rainbows. Here with Molly Meldrum. Good evening, sir. How are you? Oh, very well. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Bit of glamour here tonight, though. There is a bit of glamour here tonight, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. More glamour than the Logies. Have you actually been along to the Lido before in your illustrious career? Yes, I came to a Carlotta show here, you know. Oh, uh, Carlotta, okay. Yeah, with Billy Minogue and everyone, yeah. Now, now, Molly, I don't want to get controversial. However, I do want to just touch upon the whole roasting thing. Right. Uh, your feelings about the whole episode. I'm over it. Over it? Don't want to talk? Just over it, you know. Yeah, look, it happened. You it had was... a lot of support on the night, though. Yeah, and, I mean, and the press and, and across the country and the Australian public have been fantastic. But look, it really, it was just a show. It, we just get on with life, you know. We love you. You're wonderful. Oh, thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Molly Meldrum, very special, very special. Thank you. Over it. Recently, we visited the heart of gay Melbourne, Paran, for some vox pops to hear what the word on the street was about the recent Rainbow Awards. Hi guys, we've got Michael and Adrian here talking about the Rainbow Awards. We're going to ask them a couple of questions just to see what they think and if they actually uh, voted or not. Did you vote? No, I didn't vote this year. Actually, I did read all about it though, but I uh, never actually got around to voting. Are there, are there any particular categories that you're interested in at all? Um, it's good to see non-seen people being getting awards. So, you know, there are a lot of awards for you know, drag performers and groups and that sort of thing and pubs, but no, it's good to see uh, sort of people away from the scene getting uh, recognition for what they do. Yeah, I went to um, the awards, I think, a couple of years ago. Um, the one they held down at Commercial Road, Far End. Anyway, forget the name of the place. <laughs> um, and I had a wonderful night. Again, I forgot to vote this year, but... Um, it was That's a bit naughty. Oh, no. I mean, what do you think about the Rainbow Awards? Um, pretty irrelevant, to be honest. Not just, yeah, don't, a bit indifferent to them, don't really uh, take any notice. Do you think the uh, Rainbow Awards are relevant to uh, the Melbourne gay industry or the, the gay scene? I think they are, yes. As, as I said, it's good to see um, the different uh, areas of the gay uh, population getting uh, recognition for what they do. Oh, I guess some of the categories with, you know, some of the, you know, achievement awards and whatever are worthwhile, but as far as, you know, best drag queen or best act of the year or whatever, yeah, I just couldn't give a proverbial. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fair enough, Damien. That's, that's a great opinion. What I'd like to see is um, something for best charity event or something like that, again, to help recognise the fundraising that a lot of people do in the community and uh, especially in the big event fundraising the things that get missed. Oh, that's, that's a really good idea actually. Do you have anyone specifically in mind or? Um, well I know that best, I think Best Night Out went to the hot August night. That was, I know that was a fundraiser show for the marching girls but it'd be good just to see you know other events like that included and it might also help encourage events like that to take place a bit more. There's a lot more that's not being recognised at all so obviously food, fashion, I know that it's done and part of it, but there's also other retailers out the areas. Probably the suburbs could be more recognised as well for what they're offering. 
things like that, definitely. Did you uh, vote this year for the Rainbow Awards? No, no we, we didn't. didn't. Didn't know they were on, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what categories there were, or anyone that was listed, or any of the winners at all? No, nothing at all, literally. Nothing. Zip. Nothing. Zip. That's why Zip. we've just been in today. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know what we can about what's been going on. And you were saying before, but uh, off camera, that you actually live in the outer suburbs, and it was quite hard to get anything. Yeah, no, Frankston, we can't get any, any B news or any info of what's going on in town, so we sort of have to make the trips in, otherwise... <laughs> it's a long way on the train, I guess. And Damien, did you vote this year? Uh, no. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> and, and will you vote in the future if there were greater categories? Oh, uh, probably not, to be honest. I don't know. So if I was to say the Rainbow Awards, what's the first thing that would pop into your head? Um, probably looks, um, the way they dress, um, talent. Do you think the Rainbow Awards are relevant to uh, the gay, the gay uh, world in Victoria? Yeah, I think so. I think, yeah, I think anything that's a promotion for the gay community is really good. It's just an awareness sort of thing as well, which is good. And um, yeah, I just think it's a great promotion for the gay community. I think the more we can promote events and awards and things like that, it just gives us more of an awareness out there, I think. So, yes. Did you vote? Um, yes, I did. And did any of your favourites win at all? Or? Um, they did. Yeah, high five. High five? You like high five? <laughs> That's good. Yeah, oh, I think so. More and more the community-based um, things that involve businesses and local things that can fund and, and, you know, obviously put some dollars back into the community and things like that. So, yeah, I think more from a community awareness for, for you know, for businesses and things like that, rather than drag, from my point of view. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Will you vote next year? Uh, yes, I reckon I will, because there's an awareness and I think maybe my vote could be the difference. So is there any, anything else you'd like to say about the Rainbow Awards? Um... Congratulations to those people who won. What do you think of Q Weekly? Is there anything you'd like to see on the show? Please drop us a line with any feedback to Q underscore weekly at yahoo.com.au.